All right, everybody, what's going on? It's your main man, Everything by John. I'm back at you again. I know it's been a while uh, since you've seen the last uh, podcast episode, but due to what's going on, and I, I, you know, I've had a few changes with my own business and my life and everything like that. There's been a lot of, a lot of different changes. So, uh, but nevertheless, I'm back here with a special guest, uh, Jalinda Jones, if I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. Um, just introduce to the world who you are, state your name, and everything else. Okay, no problem. Greetings, everyone. I am Jalinda Jones. I'm actually a 2016 graduate of Florida A&M University here in Florida. <laughs> Um, and also, I am the Chief Operating Officer of Insure Financial Group, um, which was established in 2002 by my father. And so since then, we've been building this legacy for our family, for our community, and just educating on financial literacy as it um, pertains to life insurance. And just, you know, we call it planning in advance, necessary conversations. Mm, mm, mm. That's beautiful. That's real. So I love how, first of all, your father took that entrepreneurship route and mm-hmm. he has something to pass down to his kids, which is beautiful. Um, and you, you, you're a living example of that. So let, let, let's take it back a little bit into, you know, when you were, you know, young and everything. Uh, I see, obviously, you're a 2016 graduate, but when you were younger, um, what were your, like, inspirations or aspirations as well to, you know, when you were, like, say, finish college and everything like that, when you were, like, 12, 13, like, what, what did you want to do when you were younger? You know, it's crazy. Um, definitely before I went to high school, I wanted to be a fashion designer. I always knew I wanted to be in business. So I am very just talented in different ways. Like I used to make clothes, design clothes, write poetry, um, rap and sing and just do it all. And um, I wanted to be a model as well. So oh, I wanted good. to do everything. And then actually I went to an art school for high school mm. for costume design. And with that um, major in high school, I was actually doing all the costume designs, teaching people how to sew, designing the clothes, making the clothes. And it just, it took a lot out of me. I think like the passion I had for it stayed in high school. And um, I picked up something else in high school. I joined this thing called the Future Business Leaders of America, um, abbreviated FBLA. And so from there, I was being like, oh, I'm really good. I'm very competitive too. So I was doing the I was the head of the fundraiser sales, and so I was selling out the most and things like that. And so from there, I thought I had a little avenue into business that I know that later on when I do start my own clothing line again or bridal dresses, um, that I would pick that back up. But for right now, I wanted to learn business. And since then, I went to FAMU, um, did the four-year undergrad, one-year MBA program. And, you know, it just turned out this way that now I'm with my father's business. Wow, wow, wow. So so at that point when you graduated, what really, you know, what led you to make that exact decision? Because, I mean, obviously you had a few options. Mm-hmm. What made you want to get into the family business? And not only that, but into the, the world of insurance. Okay, yes, that's a good question. Um, so for me, I actually did intern at a couple Fortune 500 companies, but I did mm-hmm. not have a passion there, especially because my last internship was in Cleveland, Ohio, which I'm from Florida. I'm a Florida girl to the core. So it just being up there without my family, without that support system, I enjoyed the job. I felt nice about working um, at GE Lighting um, and strategic accounts, but I just did not see my future there. And so when I um, actually was applying and interviewing, my dad's like, well, you better get that um, job with a Fortune 500 company or a government job while he's building his business. And I was like thinking about it and praying about it. And I just said, well, dad, why can I come work with you? And he's like, me, he was just dumbfounded, like did not even see that coming, Uh thinking that Uh I would want to come and work with his business. But Uh I saw it as this, like, hey, you know, For me, I'm a hard worker, I'm a grinder, and I can go and like, you know, hit the corporate ladder and, you know, I might hit a ceiling or I have to play politics, or I can go build with my family and one day maybe own the company. And so that was more appealing to me to think about the future of it. Uh, Right now, I'm going to have to come and grind and build, but in the future, I can own this company or I can help build the legacy where my children can come and work for us instead of where they don't even have to... um, apply for a job, you know you got a job. All you got to do is come, grab a, grab whatever you can, and help build this legacy. So for me, that seemed like a better opportunity to have something that I could call my own, to own with my family. And I have three brothers as well. So um, 
two out of three are working with us as well to help build the business. So this is something we can own together. Wow, wow. I mean, well, first of all, I congratulate you again for even taking that entrepreneurship route. And only, not only that, but just uh, thinking about ownership and equity at such a young age, you know, going to the family business and, and seeing, you know, what kind of opportunities I could afford you for your family and, your, you know, generational wealth and things like that. That's, I mean, to, to, to think about that and actually accomplish that um, and be on your way, uh, you know, from that age is, is very, very rare. You know, shout out to your pops again. You know, obviously he instills some of that in you, mm -hmm. um, you know, from an early age. But wow, that's beautiful. So uh, now we know why you got into the business. So tell me how it was when you first started and you seeing like how it is with the insurance and you learned about insurance. How was it not only when you first started, but in terms of people like us, you know, not only young people, but, but, but black people as well in the community, in the area, people that you actually advertising and talking to insurance about, you know, how were their reactions to somebody like yourself that looks like them talking to, talking to them about insurance? Okay. So you gotta, for me, it was a little different because when I joined, my father had already been in the business for 15 years of insurance, mm. but he was doing more so working with funeral homes. So he was working with the funeral directors and providing them those, they're called pre-arrangements and final expense plans, where literally mm -hmm. the only thing you're thinking about is burial. And so burial, that's a, that's a specific and particular type of policy. And literally it's just however much you, the funeral director says that the burial will cost or the funeral will cost, that's what you're putting aside in order to pay for that. And so my dad was in that industry from 2002 until, two, or he's still in it now, but that was the sole focus of our business. When I joined, um, I just was getting in with him where I work full time in the office and helping like the structure of the business. But um, we do seminars in the community. So we call them, like I said, planning and advance necessary conversations where we're educating, we're going to our churches and you will be surprised. They were actually very honored and happy to hear the information because with life insurance, when I tell you it's not a popular topic. So it's one of those things that if you have the conversation and you realize that, hey, this is going to happen, transition, somebody passing away is going to happen regardless, yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. it an easier conversation of, hey, I do want to take care of this. But most people don't have insurance because they didn't have the conversation or the person they asked did not have the information to get them to the point of, okay, I feel secure with this. I have peace of mind. So for us, it wasn't, it's one of those things where lately people are saying, if you want to survive through COVID, you have to have a needs-based business, a business that people need. Well, obviously people transition. You can't stop that no matter what people are transitioning. And even with COVID, more people are transitioning. So they really see the urgency of life insurance because this is helping fund the family that's left behind when somebody transitions. So if a, pa a father passed away, and he was bringing in sole income, the family needs life insurance to say, okay, he passed away, but he left this amount of funds to help sustain so that you don't lose the house, you don't lose the car, but you can actually live on. So a lot of people stop at burial, but life insurance called whole life or term is what would actually leave the family something to be able to survive longer than they would if the person just transitioned and left nothing. Excellent, excellent point right there. And I was just about to ask you, for everybody's watching out there, um, and I and that's why I love I, I love the conversation that we had yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, for everybody that's listening out there, you know, when you get past the the fear of you know just the the, the word life insurance, and keep in mind I said insurance this whole time, but I just want the people to understand we're talking about life insurance, right? And then you said whole and term, which is under that branch. So for the people watching out there, for you know our age range, like twenty seven under 30 and even all the way up to you know maybe like 40 or something like that what is the difference not only the difference well i'll, I'll say this what's the difference first mm -hmm. between uh, a life insurance policy and i know this is what people a lot of people are thinking this the difference between a life insurance policy and something as as simple as just a a high yield investment account okay a high yield investment account Okay, so one, the first big difference is that life insurance is not an investment. So sometimes people hear about life insurance and then the people try to get them to invest in life insurance. If you're investing in life insurance, you're investing in yourself and you just decided, 
that you want to put money away in yourself, but life insurance is not an investment. So what that means is that where high yield savings or high yield investment account, those things, they work differently. Because when you talk about a stock or 401k and things like that, there's risk involved in that. Talk to them, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them. So yeah, there's risk involved in those accounts where life insurance was never an investment in the first place. This is a secure vehicle that has guarantees. So, and then most people should have some guarantees before they move into investing and playing with money because, you know, you have money that absolutely needs to be there versus money that you can play with. And if you lost it, you wouldn't lose any sleep at night. You're just like, dang, I took an L. And that, well, that's what you dang, I took an L. <laughs> Excellent point right there. And that's what I wanted to bring out of you in the conversation that we had yesterday. Mm-hmm. The fact that, you know, people, they don't, and, and that's just because people don't really look into life insurance anyway, because mm-hmm. they, they kind of shy away from it or they mm-hmm. say, oh, well, what's the difference between these investments I have right now? And you literally just laid it out. And the fact that you just said life insurance is actually more important to take care of first before these other investments mm-hmm. because of the risk involved in these other, you know, these other things such as stocks and things like that, mm-hmm. people need to understand that. So for everybody yeah. watching out there, please know the difference and the importance of life insurance and, and, and is, is completely separated from any other type of quote unquote investment you got going on. So, so now I want to ask you for all age ranges, but I want to get to a, a beautiful point you, you pointed out yesterday in a conversation mm-hmm. for the people, our, our age range, we're going to get to that in a minute, mm-hmm. but just in general, name some of the benefits um, of having uh, well, actually, you could you could actually say that the, you know the the, the differentiate between um hold and and, and like a hold and um term, mm-hmm. but also what are the differences um in terms of the benefits? Okay. Of all age ranges, yeah. Okay, so for all age ranges, if I was just to go with the differences and the benefits, I would start off with what they have in common. Whole life okay. and term are still life insurance. So what that means, if you had a hundred thousand in whole life and or a hundred thousand in term and anything happened to you, so any kind of accident or reason why you transition, your family's gonna get that $100,000. Term of whole life, anything happens to you, they, they're getting that $100,000 paid to them in a check. They get a check, they can spend it however they want. But now when we talk about the differences, term says, I'm temporary. So you're either getting me for 10, 20, or 30 years, and yeah, I'll pay the 100,000 if you pass away in 10, 20, or 30 years, But at the end of those years, you're not getting anything most of the time that you don't get a return on their money at all. And they're just saying, hey, it was nice doing business with you. If you would have transitioned in 10 years, they would have got the funds. But hey, you outlived 10 years. Unless you're going to pay this exponential price, we're not going to keep covering you for $100,000. Versus whole life, once you pick out that amount, that budget for you that's comfortable, no matter when you transition, your family's getting that $100,000. So that's the first difference. The second difference is term was one bell. That one bell and whistle that came with term was that $100,000. If anything happens to you, your family gets it. Whole life insurance instead has, well, depending on the company, and that's where we have to kind of create a relationship and talk to an insurance agent, your local insurance agent, but whole life insurance, if this was a participating company or a mutual company, usually has cash value. What is cash value? Whole life insurance has cash value where it's building some money, like an emergency savings, where you're paying your bill, your monthly um, life insurance bill. They're putting a little bit to the side in a pot that if anything were to happen, so in year 10, let's say you were putting $100 into your life insurance, and year 10, you got in a car accident, and your car got totaled. Well, now you need to buy a new car. Well, in your life insurance policy, you could have had cash value around 10000 where now, instead of borrowing money from the bank or getting a loan to pay for that car, pay for your car cash from the money you borrowed from your life insurance policy. So instead of borrowing from a bank and growing interest and paying them interest, you're paying yourself interest and building that money still in your whole life policy. That's the... Uh, I know man, it's a I want, lot. I want, I'll, I want them, it's a lot, it's a lot to impact, but I want the people to understand what you just said. The mm-hmm. fact that you can take money, you can loan yourself out money from your policy to, for, for needs at a specific moment in time, whether it be an accident or, or something where you're in a crunch, you can take out money instead of running to the bank 
you run to your, your, your policy. And guess what? When you told me yesterday, again, that cash value or, or the whole policy still remains, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so and that's not the case with a regular loan. I mean, once you take that loan out, that money is gone until you pay it back or until the loan is completely paid off. Mm -hmm. So people should know that. They should know what happens with the whole life policy with the cash value. You borrow from yourself. You're actually leaving your money in there and borrowing the insurance company's money. The only difference um, there is where you had that $100,000 policy. And you say, hey, I just, I fell on hard times. Can I pull out 10? I see it in my cash value. And they say, yes. You pull out 10. The company says, okay, well, you had 100,000, but you borrowed 10,000 from us. Collateral is what they're doing is saying, hey, you still got 10,000 on the line. If you transition, instead of us paying your family 100,000, you still owe us 10. They take their 10 from the whole life policy. Yep, so now your yep. family is 90,000. And so this is an equal exchange. Um, it does, it's not confusing. It just makes sense that, hey, you borrowed our money to keep your money growing. But if anything were to happen, your family would just get the remaining balance of um, what's left after you borrowed some. But if you decided to pay yourself back, all you're doing is building up that cash pot again of what you can borrow out. So that's the awesome part about it. And that was just benefit number one of whole life insurance was the cash value. Benefit number two, depending on the company, again, work with your local insurance agent. I, I was waiting for this one. I was, I'm waiting for this one. Okay, so benefit number two is the dividends. So people know dividends from the stock market. They know that they invest in a company, and depending on the profitability of that company, they will get a dividend. Whole yes. life insurance with the right participating or mutual company works the same way. So they actually, as the company's profitable, they can pay you a dividend until your policy. The only difference that is important to understand is that some companies they some whole life companies can say they have a dividend but elect not to pay them so the key is to work with an insurance agent that knows a company that has a track record of paying their dividends because Very if they cool. have a track Very record cool. of paying their dividends they're going to pay they more than likely are versus a company that has a track record of electing not to that's a major key and that was just benefit too Benefit three is what those dividends can do. And there's three things that dividend can do. One, it can go into your policy to build that cash value that you can borrow and build that death benefit where you started at 100,000. The longer you live and keep that policy with that company, that 100,000 can grow to 110,000, 120. And the longer you live, it can continue to grow where you're up to a $200,000 whole life policy, but your price hasn't changed. It's just because you've been with that company longer, your cash value has been building, your death benefit has been building from that dividend and the interest in the cash value. That's just one benefit of the dividend that it can do. The other two things the dividend can do is depending on the company again, that dividend can help pay your monthly payment. So instead of you paying that $150 or whatever you chose that was comfortable for you in your whole life, it can help decrease that payment until the dividend pays for it completely. That is wow. so cool. That is so wow, cool. It's wow, a great wow, place wow, to wow. kind of help your future self out because you're not keep increasing bills. You're actually decreasing a bill for your future self. The last thing that dividend can do, instead of going into the policy to make it bigger, instead of going in to pay for the policy, that dividend check can just be paid to you annually. So now you're getting wow. an annual check from your whole life insurance, which, hey, if you haven't heard that before, I think it's time to get with an agent and learn more about these whole life insurance policies because this is money making you money that you don't yes. have to worry about the risk of it being in the market. No, it's not affected by the market. This is your guaranteed whole life insurance with bells and whistles and benefits that um, can only help in a situation where you're trying to build wealth for your family. Man. Whew. I'm sweating over here. You know, I hope, I mean, this is excellent, excellent. And I love the fact that remember people that's watching right now, you know, if you're thinking about life insurance, remember, me and uh, Jalinda just just told you, you have to make sure you research the company and talk to an insurance agent to see exactly what specific points they have in each said company. That's very important. Mm -hmm. And also, another thing we talked about yesterday, tell the people right now in our age range, what is the, the extreme benefit right now if for starting life insurance right now as we speak? Um, I think I want to make sure I'm saying this right. The extreme benefit right now for someone our age who's like, oh, well, I don't have any kids right now. I don't have a family to leave money to. So why would I need life insurance? 
there's two ways you can use life insurance. The first way is to leave that 100000 to your family. The second way is you can make it a retirement income generator. So the money you build up in this policy, when you're near retirement age, you can say, hey, just start paying me my cash value as lump sum of this amount every year for the rest of my life so I can dwindle down the life insurance um, death benefit because I don't care about leaving anything to my family because I don't have either someone to leave it to. Let me just get paid that amount annually until I have no long, more cash value in it. And that, that's the one I'm thinking about. Is that what you're thinking about or you got another well, one? Actually, actually, you just added a gem. I didn't even know that one specifically. I was talking about the one that we talked about yesterday when basically it's way less of a premium to get right now as a policy okay. at our age range instead of like way later on in life yeah. because okay. of you know the mortality and things like that. Uh-huh. So let me break that down. So yeah, pretty yeah. much you all, the benefit of getting life insurance at your youngest and healthiest age is that what you can purchase now is going to cost a lot less than if you waited. So a lot of when I first got into this business with my dad, like I said, he worked with the funeral directors. So we're meeting clients age 65 to 85 that are thinking about death and like, oh, okay, now I want to leave money to my children and my grandchildren. And we're saying, oh, wait a minute, but you take um, lisinopril, like different diabetic medicines and things like that. They're not covering those people the same way. So you have um, to work with maybe not being able to be offered that policy or if they do offer a 65 to 70 year old $100,000, you're going to pay about $800, $500 $800 a month for that policy. And most people haven't budgeted for $500 to $800 a month in life insurance because they're 65 and they have all these medical conditions. Versus our age, $100,000 for us can cost like $100 a month. And that is guaranteed locked in that you're never going to pay more than that. That's your price for your whole life insurance because you got it at a, in your 20s versus wait until you have the family. So it's like, wait until you have a fire to get fire insurance. They're not covering you. They're like, no, you have to get fire insurance before the fire. So with life insurance, you want to get real large sums of life insurance before your, your lifestyle has changed and your health has changed, your age has changed, because those are the reasons why you won't qualify. And life insurance is the only type of insurance that you got to actually qualify because of your health, um, your age, and your gender. Man, I mean, and, and that's that was a great point we talked about yesterday because I didn't know well, I didn't know anything about life insurance really too much. But um, when you talked about that last part, I'm like, man, the other day I played, you know, played basketball for I didn't play in like a year, and I, my back started hurting. I was like, man, I don't know what's going on. You know, so mm -hmm. the older you get, you know, you never know what can happen. So, oh man, you just laid out all of the importances of uh, life insurance and why it's important to get it, but also at this age range we're in now. So. Uh, I just want to stress to the people, you know, how important something like life insurance is, as like you said, a vehicle um, for the future, for you and your family and generational wealth and things like that. Um, man, so so coming back to you, though, mm -hmm. Jalinda, what do you have uh, in terms of uh, your goals, uh, you know, in the insurance world uh, for like the next, you know, three to five years and 10 years and things like that? Um, that's a great question. So for me, like the fire has always been on to educate our community. Like I have a passion for waking us up in my field, but just in general, my passion is, you know, we have an ability where we're so talented in everything that we do, but we have to know what those other things that we could do in order to use our talent to excel in those things. So where yes. we're always using our body where it comes to the sports, um, yeah. mainly the sports, um, that we're really physically damaging ourselves, I think that if we tap into our mental capability, we can really own other industries and actually do well in those. And so that still comes back to my business where I'm talking to you about individual life insurance for a person, but then there's business insurance where you can sustain a business through life insurance. So just mm -hmm. like if I transition, I can leave millions or 100,000 to my family, I can transition and leave money to the college I went to. So FAMU is getting a check from Jalinda Jones. But also, it's called a charitable trust where you can leave it to your school or to a church. But it's called key person insurance, golden handcuffs. These are ways that you can leave life insurance to a business. So now this legacy, this business outlives me because I left the money to keep the business going. 
And that Ooh. is the biggest thing is that every black owned business has insurance on their business so that whenever they decide, okay, I want to retire, it's not sell the business, it's fund the business to find someone that's going to replace the person who is helping the business move forward. Yeah. <laughs> Jalinda Jones, I mean, I, I think y'all better get familiar with this name right here because honestly, I, I've never seen someone my age really break down this life insurance thing. And it's a family-owned business. She knows what she's talking about. I mean, and, and I didn't even know, I didn't even know the aspect of, because, you know, when, you, when I heard the word business, my, my, my antennas went up because, you know, that, that's what, that's the primary category I'm in, the entrepreneurship. And the fact that you can leave something, we already talk about generational wealth, but if you can leave something in terms of insurance for the business and things like that, like little loopholes that other, let's just be honest, other groups of people have already been doing. Yeah. I mean, why can't we do that the same way? And I love how you said, unfortunate, it's unfortunate, but I love how you also brought up the point yesterday of just the state, you know, the state that we in as a people, uh, you know, really just transitioning almost every day due to, you know, police brutality and things like that. But, you brought in the aspect of, well, if we had life insurance, that money is being passed on either way. So kind of, kind of, you know, I mean, it's unfortunate, but kind of break that down for the people as well. Yeah. So this is something my dad said. And when he said at first, I was like, dad, don't say that. I don't, it's yeah, kind of yeah, edgy, yeah. but then it yeah. makes sense. Like the yeah, reason yeah. why policies change is because there's money that's being taken away. So one thing we could do is boycott, but imagine if every time, if every one of us had life insurance and every time they decided, oh, this person, you know, when they say Black Lives Matter, they probably don't see it as matter because there was no economical impact by taking that life. But if every time they decided to take the life, oh, there was economical impact because you just made that family a millionaire because he had life insurance on him. Oh, you made that family a, got $100,000 or more because that her child had life insurance on him. That male had life insurance. So now he can actually pay for the lawyers. He can actually pay for um, the change that he wants in his community or his family can because he left six figures or greater to change something. You can't really make much shake with $5,000 for burial. All you're going to do is put that person in the ground. But when they leave a six figures, oh, you pay for a burial already. Now they're saying, oh, I need a lawyer. That's 10 grand right there. Bam. Now I have 90000 to see who can I contact, how can I impact the community to say, no, we need to change something because I'm not, we're not sponsoring, we're not funding the community or these businesses anymore if you don't change something. And we have the backing and the financial stability to do it. That comes with having a strategy and putting something in place. So it's a new conversation. It is, it is definitely. I never, I never heard about that or even just even thought about that, like, and, 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 and let me just break that down for all the street guys and everything like that. Let me just break it down in, 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 a, in a few terms. So I'm going to just talk differently a little bit. So if you get bodied, you know what I mean? If you're in the street, you're doing, you, you live in that life, you know what I'm saying? You, you didn't listen to your parents or whatever the case may be. you in the street, you're deep in the street, whatever. If you pass, at least your family is going to have something to hold over to bring on to somebody in their family. They could start a business or do whatever they need to do. Instead of we just lay, we just we just being laid out in the street with nothing to show for it because we made either the wrong decisions or we just getting we just getting killed out here by you know these these cops and, and everything else that's going on. When you talk about economical impact, if these other people that's you know th these other people I'm I'm just gonna say other people that's doing these things to us and. It's getting uh -oh, money off of the things that they're doing. And then all of a sudden you see businesses popping up out of nowhere. You see families getting generational wealth. Like you said yesterday, how would that change their whole mentality? What if they just decided, okay, well, you know, let's not, let's not even do that anymore. Let's just stay, stay where we at and not, not murder them. And it, like you said, that conversation is it's crazy to even think about and talk about, but it makes so much sense. Like you said. I mean, it feels eerie just talking about it. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, the other day, you know, it's like these rappers, they, they're getting killed all the time. It's like, what if there was a million dollar life insurance policy for each one of those guys? Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, it's crazy. 
They brought it up. Nipsey Hussle had a million dollar life insurance policy for his kids. So when he transitioned, they got those funds. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Ah oh, man, 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 man. So I mean, that just comes back to all the all the benefits of just life insurance for us as a people as well. You know, not only in general, but just at, uh, as at how we can use that as you know vehicles to get to where we want to go, um, either in life or death. You know, so um, man, Jalinda, I mean, it's been such a great conversation yesterday and right now. So uh, I mean, first of all, let the people know or give all the people all your, your social media, how they can contact you and everything like that. The easiest way to contact me is Instagram. I have my name right there, Jalinda, and my Instagram handle is at Jalinda. I made it so simple that, hey, that's just my name, my branding. Um, but for the company, my father's business is called Insure Financial Group, and you can find that on Instagram, Facebook, or um, our website, insurefinancialgroup.com, and that is with an E, like the milk insure. Um, there was something I did want to say before we close this up because it's very yes, critical when course, understanding life course. insurance. Um, there's different types. So we talked about the two major ones, term and whole life. And most people know whole life as permanent insurance. And there's this slogan out there, buy term and invest the rest. But again, we're not investing life insurance money. We're putting something aside for secured guaranteed funds when it comes to life insurance. So term is good, but for a temporary situation, you really want to get into a place where you have something that's guaranteed. And then on the, end, on the other end, with whole life, there's something called universal life insurance. I believe that universal life insurance is just not for everyone, just like one size does not fit all. Whole life insurance, um, when it comes to universal, is not for everyone. That's for someone that is investment savvy because universal index flexible premium life insurance is kind of an investment. It has investment pieces in it, but that's not for someone that does not understand that with that policy comes the details of understanding how to overfund it, understanding that there's fees involved that increase. And if you don't keep up with that, you could lose your policy. So I am not a person that just advertises universal life insurance. I would say if you're someone that's just trying to set it and forget it and just have a policy in place that's building and cooking and baking the longer you live, that's going to be a whole life insurance policy. It does depend on the company and who you work with to provide you yeah. the information to know that, hey, is this a whole life insurance policy that continues to grow? Does it pay a dividend? Does it have cash value? Let me see the cash value. How fast does it grow? Is it something that is sustainable? Um, those are questions you want to ask. Um, just know the difference between the life insurance you're getting um yeah and i just don't really preach about the universal unless it's for someone who knows how to manage that and wants to be zoned in focused on watching that policy if you're someone that really just wants to cover your family make sure that no matter when you transition there's funds there if there's emergency there's funds to pull out you want to look into some whole life plan so that you have access to cash but if it's something where right now you don't believe you can afford whole life then try to get a term life insurance that is with a company that can convert the term to whole life. So there's some companies that only sell terms. Then that means that once that term is up and your temporary insurance has went away, you have to requalify. When there's other companies that you have the term, but once that term is complete, you can convert to whole life and you don't have to requalify. That's a major key that I felt like I needed to share. Got you, got you, excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Man, there's so much to unpack, but I mean, you, you just covered so much for these people out here. And I really appreciate you coming on and, 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 and sharing this this major opportunity that we have in front of us um, in terms of life insurance. Um, man, I appreciate you again. Uh, is there anything else that you want to say for, for our people or just in general about uh, life insurance? Um, I, like I said, get it before you need it and be a blessing and not a burden. That's for me. It's just one conversation can lead to one decision and one action that can change the legacy of your family when it comes to generational wealth. So we have to get on that because I think it's not any other time. June woke us up that, hey, we need to be about that action of progression of our people, of our businesses, so that when it comes to a time where, oh, they're cutting off jobs, Who's the first person they're going to fire? Well, you can't yeah. fire me from the business I own. So yeah. every day of COVID, I was still in the office agitating, mm. pushing, understanding, and our business was still here. Yeah. But if there's someone that can control your paycheck or whatnot, 
you want to make sure that you have something in place that you have an emergency saving. Because if you had life insurance building up cash value, you could go a couple months without making a check because right, you could right, at least right. borrow from your um, policy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that's so true right there. That's so true. And, and, and like you just said, you know, something like life insurance, the right way, structuring it, uh, it shows you how important that is in, the, in these type of times. Mm-hmm. Man. Jalinda Jones, I, I really appreciate you. I got to say your first and last name at the same time. I can't just say Jalinda. So, um, yeah, she gave you, yeah, and just give the people one more time all your social media. Okay, that's okay. so you. personally, if you want to reach out to me, it's Jalinda, J-A-H-L-I-N-D-A, and that's at Jalinda on Instagram. Um, for the business, it's Insure Financial Group, at Insure Financial Group on Instagram. You can type in Insure Financial Group on Facebook. LinkedIn, our website is Insure Financial Group, our office number, we are located in Lakeland, Florida, but we're able to service all states by um, just being licensed there, so you can fill out the, just talk to me and kind of get an understanding, I will break down the different types of policies, so if, even if I'm not able to help, or um, I can refer you out, and that's something I do all the time, so it's 863 863- Two two five five six five zero is our office number, and you can get in touch with me, with my dad, who's above. Um, and we have a team of sixteen agents right now that are able to help the community as wow. well in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina. But we can be licensed anywhere and help anyone. So feel free to give us a call. Excellent, excellent. So you heard it there first. I mean, if you have any questions about the breakdown you see in the interview here. Uh, you want to get started on life insurance, no matter what age, they can help you out. Her, her father, they got a team. I didn't even know the team was that big. So um, if they're not licensed in your state, they can definitely, uh, you know, either refer out or, or put, you, put you in the right direction. So, again, guys, this is everything by John. I really appreciate it. Uh, first time coming back on in a few months, and I came back with another bomb. You know, all my podcast interviews are bombs. So, um, Jalinda Jones, I really appreciate you again, and um, hopefully I get you on again. Yeah. Um, so we can really delve in more into life insurance and any other uh, business or entrepreneurship opportunities for, you know, our people, because that's that's really the basis of the whole podcast for me um, and why oh, I started yeah. it. Well, yeah, I appreciate yeah. saying that. I think it's important to say life insurance is a great career choice. So um, mm-hmm. you didn't. I didn't have to go to college to it. I think going to college has helped me in my business mind to help build this business. But as an agent, it's not it's not a hard process. So if you're even interested in becoming an agent, feel free to give us a call as well, and we'll walk you through that process. So, yeah, mm. feel free to give us wow. a call. Excellent. I think someone's for an interview just called just now, so I don't know if that's somebody. Yeah, just... yeah, we'll have to. <laughs> yeah, my office yeah. is on there. But yeah. They... Excellent, excellent. All right, well, Jelena Jones, appreciate you again. And um, this is Everything by John. You can contact me on Instagram, YouTube, Everything by John. It's another episode of the beautiful podcast I got going on. And, I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Peace.